Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about Home Assistant add-ons. I recently reinstalled Home Assistant. I'm actually using only one add-on. The one add-on to rule them all. My precious. Seriously, I found an add-on that can actually cover nearly all of your Home Assistant needs. And in this video, I'm going to share with you why I actually picked that add-on and how you can configure it. If you're a bit of a minimalist like me, then stay tuned. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers and let's roll the intro. Now let's backtrack a bit. When I found Home Assistant, I was like a kid in a candy store. All of those functionalities and all those add-ons. I was like, yes, this one. I also installed, get me this one. Why not? I'll install them all. I want to find out what they're doing. Yeah, I'll have this one too. And this one. And I was just installing anything I could find and anything I could get my hands on. Well, you know what? I'm just going to install this one too. Well, I don't know what this does. Mm, let me just install it. You never know. I was just adding and adding stuff. And I was adding all these add-ons and you know, I was having a great time. But then I asked myself, do I really need all these add-ons? Can I just get rid of them all and just use only one? My goal in this channel is to get as many people as possible into smart home and specifically if they can make the jump into Home Assistant. There are a lot of good videos out there on the internet, top five Home Assistant add-ons, must have Home Assistant add-ons, and I appreciate them and I really, all of them are really useful. But that, this could be really overwhelming for someone else they're new they have to learn all these things about home assistant and now they have to get their head around all these add-ons what they're supposed to do are they gonna actually miss out but let me tell you one simple secret you can install and uninstall add-ons at any time you want you don't need to install a bunch of add-ons at the beginning unless you actually want to and you actually understand what they do individually stick with me now there's one more thing i want to cover before we go into the add-on the main reason why i try to use only one add-on is because it's less moving parts Less moving parts gives me a more stable smart home, a more stable and a robust smart home. It improves your family acceptance factor, makes your life easier, and you are not owned by your smart home, but you own your smart home. Now, the one add-on to rule them all, for me, is Visual Studio Code. Now, in this part of the video, I'm actually going to explain to you why Visual Studio Code is the add-on that basically can cover nearly all of your needs, how I use it in my smart home, and how to get set up with it if you've never used it before. Let's jump into the screen now. So if you're new to Home Assistant, just click on the Supervisor tab, click on Add-on Store, and here you can search Visual Studio Code. You can click on it. To install it, you'll have an Install button over here. Enable Start on Boot and Enable Show in Sidebar so you can actually have it here on the left like I have. The first thing you can do with Visual Studio Code is that you can access all of your configuration files very, very easily. You can create files, you can create folders, you can add code as you wish. Visual Studio Code has the auto completion feature, which allows you to type in things and to immediately give you a result. And let me show you how that works. So assume I want to add a, another light in a group. So I can just go light. And as you can see, I immediately get a huge list of all of my lights. So I don't really need to remember which light is which and what I've called them. So it's going to massively allow you to save time compared to, for example, using the file editor or using a notepad or a text file. With the button over here, you can click and add new files. You can add new folders. You might be asking yourself, but what about the command line? So to install something very, very important, like the Home Assistant Community Store, you need access to the terminal, you need access to the command line. I'm going to show you how you can do that in Visual Studio Code. So click over here, go to terminal, and click on new terminal and there you've got it so you can run any of your terminal commands so if you say ls minus l and clear i mean you can do anything you wanted to do so you can see cd minus minus ls cd config so you don't really need a terminal add-on you can just use visual studio code very easily and not only it auto completes on yaml files but it also auto completes on mdi files so you can actually see those little icons in the code itself when you create them. But you know what? No add-on is perfect. Visual Studio Code isn't perfect. It's awesome, but it's not perfect. It has two limitations. First of all, it is memory intensive. But I would argue if this is your only add-on or one of the few add-ons that you have, then that shouldn't be much of a problem. But another limitation is the 64-bit operating system. So if you're running a system on 32-bit, it's not gonna be compatible with Visual Studio Code at the moment of filming this. Now let me know in the comment section down below if that has actually changed 
if you're watching this in the future. And also, if you're enjoying this video, then give this a like. If you want to see more content from Smart Home Makers, then subscribe to the channel. So be honest with me. Did you actually guess what was the add-on? I bet you did. Let me know in the comments section down below if you already knew what add-on I was going to talk about. So you might say, hey, this is all cool, but I want to add more add-ons. What add-ons would you suggest to you if I didn't want to have only one? Well, there are a couple of good add-ons I want to throw out there as some ideas, or at least explore them and know how they work. For example, the DAC DNS add-on will be crucial if you want to access your Home Assistant installation from outside of your network without using Nabucasa. MariaDB is going to improve your performance in your Home Assistant installation by swapping out the database that Home Assistant comes in when you install it, with a much more powerful one. For this one, I would install it if you're actually hitting some performance issues or if you feel your system is a bit sluggish. If not, just leave it as it is if you're a beginner. Samba Share can also be useful if you want to move files from your Windows system or your Mac system to your Home Assistant installation quite quickly. NerdRed is another cool automation platform and you can use that and integrate it with Home Assistant to create nice and flow based diagrams. That could be a cool add-on to check out. Grossy, I made a separate video about that, about chores and how you can use that. Check that out and you can also see if you're interested in managing your household chores with Home Assistant. One thing really to consider, if you really need something, you can always just install it, use it, and then just disable it or uninstall it if you're not using it anymore. This is it's very fast to install an add-on and it's very fast to uninstall it. And especially if you're running on a system that hasn't got much memory, you're gonna to need to be aware of that. And remember, the more things you add to your system, the more moving parts and the more risk something can go wrong. And you're gonna to have to spend your weekend fixing your smart home, which is not fun. If you like this video, I'll leave you with a nice custom playlist with my latest videos on home assistant and home automation. As always, like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. This was Gio from Smart Home Makers and I'll see you in the next video. My precious, my precious.